Got them, them 2000 beats. This is called Triple, a group of talented performers and comedians from Korea oh. you've probably never heard of. They were formed back in 1994 when the word K-pop hasn't even been invented. In 2002, one of the members made the biggest mistake of his life, which will change the entire course of P-pop history. <gasps> Did he become the CEO? Do you remember this song? We've never heard that song. Oh. Oh, it's from them. Wait, is he... Did he become a writer? I'm jumping. It all started with this man, Jong Song Han. When he left the trio in 2002 to become an entrepreneur, Cult Triple became Cult 2. But most of their fans definitely thought that Song Han's decision was a huge mistake because the remaining members started racking up different awards in the entertainment industry. That's crazy. If he only stuck around, he would have gotten those awards too. But this man's decision was final. He used all of his savings to build an event organizing company called Show BT Entertainment. Oh. Yep. I'm talking about Tatang Robin. Tatang noticed how passionate Filipino fans were during the rise of K-pop, so he wanted to organize K-pop concerts and events that promote Korean and Filipino culture. To make that happen, he needed entertainers. A group of young people that would be part of the package of their service as an event organizer. We are talking about people who can do dancing, singing, and even act as servants like waiting tables and assisting guests. So he held an audition and hundreds of young talents applied. 30 of them passed as trainees. They were then called Nara, which in Korean means country and is the national tree of the Philippines. They went That's to cool. multiple events together, including the fan meeting event of the K-pop group called Off-Road. After numerous events, Tatang Robin saw something special when it comes to Filipino talent. He realized that some of his trainees were far too talented to just end up as small time performers. So he decided to launch the first P pop boy group that underwent strict Korean type training. Out of the 30 trainees, only few have made it. Jan Paolo Nase. He always wanted to be a performer. As a young dreamer, he joined several competitions as a soloist and also a member of the K-pop dance cover group called PHP. As a trainee, he was the guy who shows up early and leaves late despite juggling a full-time job as a data analyst to provide for his family. Whoa. He was the first one selected due to his undeniable diligence and leadership qualities. He is known to have critically acclaimed songwriting ability, a badass rapper, and was often dubbed as a genius, but he consistently denied it because he claimed to be just a hard worker. This made him the destined leader of the group. He debuted with the name Sejin, but later changed his name to Pablo. Now that the methodical leader is chosen, they needed more members. Tatang Robin just got a genius composer in Pablo, so they needed someone who can dance. And this next guy is exactly that. And even more. Still. Still. Stelvester Ahero. He was only 16 when he started competing as a dancer while studying. 16? He was a born winner despite growing up as a bullied kid. He made performing his escape from the harsh reality of the world. He did a great job channeling the negative aspect of his life and converting it by winning multiple K-pop dance cover competitions with his group Sayon. He is also a hard worker. He was teaching dance to kids while competing. 
There was a point when he worked too hard that it threatened his life due to poor health. He is a very skilled choreographer. In fact, he's the main culprit behind most of SB19's snappy and amazingly synchronized dance routines. But little did they know that dancing wasn't even his only talent. He easily became the main heavenly voice of the group because his vocals were just so good. So good, yeah. Out of this world. He debuted as Stell, the main vocalist, the lead dancer, and choreographer of the group. Dang. Josh Cullen Santos became homeless at the age of 16 and it was his decision. He's had the worst childhood among the other members. From growing up in a toxic environment to being physically abused as a kid by their nanny. At an early age, he witnessed what it feels like to be a member of a middle-class family that went rock bottom in just a matter of months. He experienced getting evicted from apartments to smaller rooms. It came to a point when his family had nothing to eat but ketchup and salt. They had no permanent address. Because of that, Josh and his sister dropped out of school multiple times so they got bullied at school for being repeaters. Sometimes he would get into fistfights for defending her. Josh had enough of this so he took matters into his own hands by leaving. He became independent and started working as an internet cafe attendant. Using his own income, he took the alternative learning system and was able to finish his high school degree. Wow. He clearly had no background in performing. Not until he met new friends from the dance community which led to him meeting Stell and Seyan. <gasps> They became co-members and went on to win numerous K-pop dance cover competitions all over Asia. They even met BTS during one of their winning runs in Korea. In a way, Josh was saved by Stell after trying so hard to save himself. And it paid off because after training, Josh ended up debuting as the lead rapper and dancer of the group. Bro, whoa. Justin the Josh didn't have to audition. Apparently, he was a very good-looking guy that when he joined a talent workshop as a teenager, Show BT immediately took notice and offered him to become a trainee to improve his singing and dancing skills. That is so cool. He was one of the late joiners. And when he did, he immediately saw a familiar face in Josh. You look familiar. Apparently, the two had a stint in performing together in a K-pop dance cover group called Zero to Hero. Got it was literally destiny. They all just how somehow were in line. So Justin as well wasn't new in the world of performing. He auditioned to be a part of the televised Pinoy boy band superstar show, but he didn't even make it to the live auditions. Perhaps it was fate. Yeah. He didn't have great singing skills at the time. It was only when he became a trainee that he improved astoundingly in the vocal department. He went on to finish his college degree in multimedia arts while training, which earned him a skill in filmmaking. He then got selected to debut as the main visual, the sub-vocalist, and the creative director of the group. What the? He was the would-be director behind the record-breaking P-pop music video, What? and more. But that's a story for another video. At this point, Show BT seemed to have completed the group. Four members in a P-pop group, a nice even number two rappers, and two vocalists. They were perfectly balanced, but they felt like something was missing. Perhaps someone was missing. Someone who could take this already great group of guys and push them to achieve the next level, the extraordinary level. Someone so naturally gifted that he could stand out in the presence of the already talented group of young artists. This venture that Tatang Robin took needed an apex, so he started the online auditions. When Josh heard about it, he was like, I know a guy. Ken. Philip John Susson is such a specimen. He was so naturally gifted that excelling in sports looked like a walk in the park for oh, he's him. He's just perfect. He grew up in a church under the care of his grandparents. He was an artistic kid, so he was active as an editorial cartoonist in school. Nobody taught him to play musical instruments. He taught himself by just listening to the music, so he ended up becoming a southpaw guitarist. But he later fixed it as he learned more. 
he didn't even know that he could dance until he was forced to in order to get good grades during their school interims. After discovering dance, he transformed from a guy who didn't know it to someone who can fly. What? Because of his raw talent, he ended up teaching dance to the entire school what? and continued on to form a K-pop dance cover group called Amigo 7. Apparently, his group gave Josh's group so much trouble during their early competitions because they were very good rivals. So he decided to recruit him. See. But Philip was hundreds of islands away and didn't have the money. What did Josh do? He shelled out for his plane ticket. With nothing else to lose, Philip went and left his previous life in the countryside. He then trained with the boys and officially debuted with them as Ken, the main dancer, the bass vocalist, and the lead rapper of the group. One thing to note is that they were an unlikely bunch because they wouldn't have met each other if Tatang Robin stayed with his already successful group in Korea. That's very true. Justin failed his first audition so he didn't even bother to audition again because he thought he wasn't ready. And Josh wouldn't have attempted to recruit Ken if Show BT's training program didn't even exist. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the butterfly effect. Literally destiny. When a small and seemingly insignificant occurrence has a rippling effect through time leading to a consequential event sometime long after the initial event, or as Google would put it, a phenomenon whereby a minute localized change in a complex system can have a large effects elsewhere. Tatang Robin's so-called mistake back in 2002 led to forming the future P-pop kings. In 2018, SB19 was formed. The name of the group was carefully picked. The number 19 is the sum of Korea and the Philippines area code digits, 82 and 63. So 8 plus 2 plus meaningful. 6 plus 3 is 19. SB doesn't only mean show BT. It is all about their ultimate goal for Pinoy Sound to break into the music industry, which is fearlessly represented by this praise. Sound break. Wow. Well, that is so, like, meaningful. They thought about the name so, so cool. I feel like it was just all destiny. The way that they all, like, met each other in some point in their life, and they just all came together to form the band. Like, they all had their own story, too, and then they became <laughs> what they are now. Yeah, a lot of like, them, they had, like, like, their ups and downs. Struggles, and yeah. Like, they had such a, like, sad story and, like, a background. But the way that they worked so hard and then became like the director or like the choreographer the writer. or the writer. That is so cool. Like everybody in the group has their own thing. But they all came together to form a group and like they made it work. They made it blend together. They made it like incredible group. Like that's really cool. Yes. It was good. a good thing that they felt like they needed one more. One more because you, you just look at him, him and, and you're like, you can't do it without him. You can't do it without him. You can't. Like the five of them is just like perfect. Yeah, they were all meant to be together. Yeah. They were all meant to be together. It's kind of like some married couples are like, we were like, we took a picture at dinner. Disneyland and he was in the background or like something like that we're in the same contest and now we're married it's kind of like that like it was just destiny